Welcome everyone, I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, tonight my guest is Bruno Frizzoni, the uh, footwear designer. Bruno relaunched his own brand in uh, 2022. He was the creative director of Roger Vivier from 2002 until 2018, I believe. Um, and he'll join us uh, shortly. Welcome everyone. Let me see if... Bruno is here. Hi Cécile. Hope all is well. Uh, Bruno. Bonjour Christine. So feel free to ask your questions in comments and uh, we'll try to answer them. I think Bruno is in the countryside. Hi, Caroline. Welcome, everyone. Hello from Mumbai. Oh, so nice. Hi, Kate. We need to catch. Chap. Um, let me check with Bruno. Of course, we did a, a quick test before and it worked and now it says Bruno is unable to join. Ugh. Let, let me try again. Hi, Corinne. <laughs> okay, I think this time it would work. No. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Bruno. Of course, the Wi-Fi was uh, stopped. Of course, it, it's always, you know, I, I was it saying was, we did the... You know, hi, everyone. Hi, love. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for making it. Yes, we did a tech check before. It worked perfectly well. And uh, of course, uh, when we are trying um, now, we, we struggled a bit, but everything is fine now. Where are you, Bruno? I'm in the countryside. Oh, so uh, sounds good. Actually, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, an area called um, uh, La Puise. La Puise, where is that? Originally where uh, the writer Colette was born and educated mm -hmm. and it uh, will in a, in a little village there, there are only uh, farmers around so it's very rural mm. is it in Burgundy Bur where, where you're from yeah. Yeah? yeah yeah it's where you grew up actually I grew, grew uh, in in uh, in the south of Burgundy okay so it's a different region. It's more uh, nearby uh, Dijon, Chalon-sur-Saône, something like that. Mm. Near, okay. Yeah, let's say Bone with the wine. <laughs> Very good let's wine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because your parents were Italian, but you grew up in France in Burgundy. Is that correct? That's correct. They moved. Uh, they, 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 they left. It, they leave. It, they left Italy in the fifties. Uh, just after they get married, and uh, the the concept of family was uh, was uh, in Burgundy. Okay. And yeah. I also read that you had a very happy childhood. Yes. <laughs> if one can. <laughs> what is your earliest memory of a of shoe? When, uh, when did it first hit you? The, 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 
the questions sound very familiar. <laughs> I know. I'm sure you've been asked these questions many times, but yeah. I know. And actually, I have to say, full disclosure, I know the answer and I love it. So I want yeah. to share it. Uh, the, 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 probably the most powerful that I, I, I remember always is the one I was probably five or six and it was uh, and it was uh, um, Santa Claus night I mean uh, the Christmas Eve uh, night mm -hmm. uh, in the church and uh, and as a kid you know church is pretty long uh, service so you know there's talks quite annoying for a little boy and uh, and i was looking around you know watching the statues watching the arches watching the clothes and uh, and watching my shoes mm -hmm. and, uh, you know when when a little boy or a little girl uh, start to get bored you 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 focus on something and maybe you play with the flowers on your shoes i was just uh, uh studying the, the 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 number of holes you know it was uh, this kind of uh, of uh, of classical shoes with little holes mm -hmm. and and i was kind of trying to understand how many <laughs> there were and that was probably my first uh, focus on shoes but uh, uh, my mother being in italian uh, in the 50s 60s i'm born in the 60s mm -hmm. uh, so she was very, uh, um, uh, to say, from simple uh, uh, family, but uh, they would dress um, as mostly Italian does usually. That is uh, very, um, uh, uh, with a lot of attention they pay to, to the look, the, the, the way they show. And uh, it's, it's not about to be bright, but she was always kind of impeccable uh, with this kind of... Uh, let's say a Sophia Loren mood, uh, it was the period, so little stiletto, uh, the bag to match with, uh, same material, same color, and, uh, and a very well cut fitted dress she, she had done herself. Uh, wow, so in Burgundy in the 60s, she was very chic, I guess, for, <laughs> or everyone was like this. Uh, for me, uh, in, my, in my little boy's eyes uh, i was thinking i was the the chicest of the, the area <laughs> <laughs> and then you um so you grew up when did you realize it could be you were drawing you were sketching all the time or was it uh, something that came later i believe it, it came a little later i, I, I have uh, not precise memory Story of when I was five or six, actually, I, I have a, uh, um, let's say, a precise memory of uh, where I would live uh, if we would move uh, from a, a house to an apartment or this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But these details uh, are so precise as uh, uh, when I started really to, to draw and to uh, be focused on that and to uh, enjoy it. Uh, it's probably a li slightly later, but not that many, not that much. It was, uh, I believe, um, when uh, we were two boys uh, at the um, uh, religious school, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to and then by 10, 11, you, do, you go to church and you have your, I don't remember, uh, uh, we say in, in English, but you dress in white and, uh, and you're supposed to uh, uh, do a special uh, event and thing. And the years to prepare this, uh, the, 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 the clergyman would ask uh, drawing, you know, to illustrate some, uh, some things. Uh, uh, study mm -hmm. and we were this little boy who was kind of competition to get the the, the most the, yeah the greatest attention and the the, the greatest uh, drawing so it starts with this and then uh, I never stopped uh, drawing uh, reading and drawing and playing with uh, with friends mm -hmm. And it's still what you will, you're doing now. <laughs> Fast <I'm> forward. Still... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the, not the same games, but uh, and I'm still drawing. Yes, uh, uh, that's probably something. Uh, um, 
I do in a very natural way. Um, yes. Do you draw every day? No. No. No, 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 no. no. Because uh, um, I draw when I have a reason to draw nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is still my uh, 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 most enjoyable occupation. It's actually not work for me. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it just it just something I do. Uh, yes, with a great, great uh, sense of joy. Wow. So you've never had the feelings that you were working, or yes, because there are parts of the jobs where that you know I'm, I'm not. With, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this man called Hervé van der Straten, mm -hmm. he's a designer, yeah. uh, and he draws. Uh, actually, he's drawing in the, in, in the, in the barn. Uh, uh, if he so, wants to join us <laughs> at no, the end of the conversation. He's, he's actually half-dressed, probably, because it's quite hot. So <laughs> okay. not, he won't show himself. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> But no, he drew and, uh, and the, we both uh, actually uh, enjoy what we do uh, when it's about creation. I actually enjoy the part of creation. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of the work is, of job is, is less enjoyable for me. But uh, whatever is about uh, uh, thinking of something, uh, imagining things, dreaming of things and, and, and put it on a paper and have it made, and to the most, maybe uh, uh, the nearest of what is uh, in my dream eventually uh, is sp spend time with these people elaborating things is the best moment in, uh, in, in the work time. Um, do you mean when you uh, conceive the shoes after, after the drawing, it's also working with the team to, the, the, to make them in 3D, the whole, the whole, the whole process. process? Okay. Not only, and you mentioned Hervé, do you work together sometimes? We avoid to uh, <laughs> take this kind of risk. Uh, uh, <laughs> when when it's, it's, it's sometime uh, we may consult, uh, do consulting each other. I may uh, say to him uh, something on his, uh, uh, maybe on the elaboration of, uh, of, uh, of what he do or, uh, but but I never authorize myself to uh, say something that that is to be followed, really, because uh, I wouldn't be uh, happy to be responsible of any mistakes he would mm -hmm. do. So I, uh, uh, we both, uh, anyway, uh, able to listen to critic and, and take them for what they are and, and use them for what they are. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it's, uh, it's, it's our inner choice to, to decide uh, what to do with this. Right. But we, we never really worked together. We, we uh, two times, uh, actually, I'm wrong saying that, uh, we collaborate on two shoes I've designed for uh, Bruno Frizen in the past. Mm -hmm. It was uh, uh, shoes with uh, specific metal uh, and, ju uh, and ju um, jewelry on the, on the foot, but it would, it would uh, um, directly uh, hold the foot in a way, uh, mm. the feet. In so that was a very specific style, and uh, and then uh, in the VDA period, uh, there was a moment when uh, uh, actually when when uh, I was working on the, on the, the elaboration of the of the first boutiques mm -hmm. uh, show a selection of Herbe's work uh, to Mr. De La Valle, and without saying anything, uh, because I didn't want to do something that was um, strange. And, uh, and I said, well, these are pieces, among other pieces I would show that I find quite uh, relevant for the, for, for the boutique. And he said, oh, that, that is perfect. So we start to work with Hervé, yeah. and then he understood he was my partner, of course, but there mm -hmm. was nothing hidden or it was just non, not said because there was not uh, a necessity to, to say that at this moment. Right. Uh, and then uh, working with us, uh, uh, doing special made uh, cabinet or uh, console or lights. Uh, uh, we slowly go to uh, develop many, many, many store after this concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
less involved because when you do a first concept, then they want you, they want you, they want to be free to do whatever they do. And I was fine. I had just a, a final comment that would be, or not followed. And, uh, and at a certain time, they understood that Hervé was quite good at uh, uh, um, considering and understanding the space of a place. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, work together on, on this kind of matter for some, some time. Mm. So that was, in a way, uh, uh, there were some a way uh, yeah, yes. to And together. I was going to say your style, you really like geometry, you really like volume, so there are uh, similarities between what he does and what you're doing. Yeah, in we both, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, there's a rigor and there's, a, there's um, also a fantasy mm -hmm. uh, that is never uh, uh, separate, that always go together. There's never something that is really dry. Mm -hmm. uh, we like uh, uh, to, I think we share uh, the idea of having something that communicates something to your soul and to your uh, feelings. Mm -hmm. if, if possible. And back to your path. Uh, you came to Paris when you were 20, right? Did you, uh, was it for your yes. studies or you worked straight at Jean-Louis Chevet? No, I spent one year in, this, in, a, in a private school, uh, mm -hmm. just the, uh, uh, let's say, I've, I've the, the, the ingredient of what is fashion uh, at the time. I wouldn't consider to do anything that was uh, too specifically uh, technical mm -hmm. because um, I never wanted to uh, um, do everything from A to Z. Uh, I like the idea to share with people and to have the, their, the best skill of the others to do the thing I may dream of and I may help them to go to where I want to go. And mm -hmm. I think it's more, uh, to me, uh, I, I believe this is the way I work and I think it's more... Uh, uh, strong the, the result uh, uh, because uh, you're always stronger if you are two or three people instead of one. Uh, so, that's, uh, so that's why I just did this very short period of, of study, uh, mostly understanding fashion and understanding what is the, the job about mm -hmm. eventually. And uh, eventually draw in a, in a way that would be more uh, uh, readable for, for, for some people. And then uh, a year later, I was really, I was actually poor also, you know, so I couldn't spend uh, so many years uh, uh, just studying. So I wanted to work. And I was really into the idea of uh, work is, is where I will uh, learn the more. Mm -hmm. And I started with, uh, with one of the free uh, appointments that uh, after like 30 calls I, I would get. And one of them was Jean Boucherer and he proposed me immediately a stage, uh, an internship, sorry. Internship. And after three months I was, I was, I was uh, hired in the studio. And, uh, you were yes. persistent because you still made 30 calls. It's not like uh, you, you were, you didn't give up. No. But one should but never give up. Yeah. You, no one's, I mean, you, div, you probably never give up when you, uh, for, to get the first job or the first internship. Oh. You know, it's, it's quite, uh, uh, I tried everything. I never, uh, I, uh, I tried the, the connection that would never work at the end. Everyone would be very nice and pleased to, to help me, but it would never succeed to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I just, you just take your phone and, and you, you, you got your own list and, and then you try to call the people. Some would answer at the time. It was in, yeah, in early 80s. So people were a little less uh, uh, HRH or whatever. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and there was no Instagram. There was no, uh, no this kind of thing where you could show your, uh, you, who you are and what you would do. So, you, so yeah. So and then I enjoyed very much uh, this first experience. Uh, uh, it was quite long, four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also a moment in, in uh, we would do everything. Uh, so it, it wasn't about shoes at that time. No. Because you were designing. Quite later on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 
I would draw shoes uh, uh, like one or two because at the time they wouldn't do uh, this kind of uh, shoe collection in uh, in all the houses. Mm -hmm. uh, you would do uh, only actually there was probably Saint Laurent who was starting with uh, with a real business. And, uh, and Dior, or, or, of course, always had for uh, a long time. But usually they would have licenses and sometimes they would do only shoes for, uh, for the, the shoes. Uh, haute couture yeah. or, or shoes. And maybe sometimes they would reuse the shoes or uh, we would paint the shoes also just to change the color. And mm -hmm. it's the same because the, the budget of shoes was not something people would consider as something that would matter. So, um, but then uh, my first experience, I remember we, we had rehearsal uh, during the three months, uh, three, four months elaboration of collection. And there was some rehearsal at jean Richard and we would be all dressed with, uh, with this uh, um, uh, pharmacien. How do you say pharmacien in English? Is, uh, uh Pharmacist? Uh, well, we say drugstore for pharmacy, yeah. but I guess, yeah. Quite long uh, uh, thing. And everyone was dressed this way. Jean Wicherer, everyone. The only one who would not wear it was Madame Paulette. Mm -hmm. Madame Paulette would come with her basket full of beautiful stuff. Madame Paulette was this, uh, this uh, uh, headdresser, uh, uh, the equivalent of uh, Stephen Jones, let's say. Okay. She was 80s something. She was this perfume from the 40s, and it was so amazing to see her eating. And uh, and then uh, so that's that's a kind of a beautiful memory for, for me. Um, and then I would start to draw shoes with uh, with Mancini, because René Mancini, the brand. Uh, would do the shoes for Jean Richerer, so they would ask me uh, uh, to do like one or two sketches. I don't know why and how I started actually. I don't remember. Mm. And then you worked it, with, then you worked with all the greats. You worked with Karl Lagerfeld, with Yves Saint Laurent, Ungaro. Actually, I never worked in direct with Karl Lagerfeld. I worked uh, actually for the licenses. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, as a freelance, mm -hmm. I was. Uh, uh, I was freelance at the time, and there was uh, uh, in uh, in the district of accessories. There was Christina Zeller, mm -hmm. uh, who was Delvaux for a while, and uh, um, and we we know each other from uh, from Lanvin period. And she asked me to to for two or three seasons to collaborate on on uh, Karl uh, Lagerfeld jewelry and and handbags. But I never really worked closely with Carl. I think we never really met working. Mm -hmm. uh, we met only once uh, uh, at the time. It was uh, it was there was the brand Carl Lagerfeld in the beginning, and I remember uh, the CEO was uh, Ralph Toledano, and uh, Christina was there too, and they were convinced I should meet Carl Lagerfeld, and uh, and it was not a Carl Lagerfeld decision to meet me uh, so um, they so, push probably uh, <laughs> the, so do you mean he wasn't oh, very I'm, happy to meet like you? and uh, and uh, it's there's been this q a very like uh, a racing car uh, mode <laughs> and, uh, and uh, after one minute and 45 seconds i say well thank you goodbye uh, and he left the room and i look at Ralph and I said, well, it's, it all, said. Well. it's, all, it's all said. And, and he said, well, no, it, it, it was actually well, you know, I said, well, <laughs> one minute and 45 seconds. I don't see it this way. So of course, I never hear of it. <laughs> and Saint Laurent, is that where you met Elitop? Because last week my guest was Elitop yeah, and he, that, he mentioned that, you actually. Like, like an hour ago after the test. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, well, well, I again, I, uh, here also, I never worked with, Miss, with Monsieur Saint Laurent. Uh, I never had this chance. Uh, I tried actually, uh, uh, but there was no, there, there, there was, it never worked. Uh, uh, but uh, when, when Albert Elbaz mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. arrived at Saint Laurent, 
uh, through a common, a common friend and someone who was actually uh, very near him in the work uh, in, in the studio. They called me. And, uh, and uh, so I, I, I do, uh, yeah, I start, I work for Saint Laurent uh, as a freelance again uh, for two seasons. The two mm -hmm. first, uh, uh, and yes, I met, I, I, I met uh, uh, um, Ellie Eddie, at the time. Um, yeah, at the time. <laughs> and we, our friend from that time and we uh when i was at vivier uh, uh he was actually closely working with albert at lanvin and, so right uh, across the street right basically right across the street and after uh i was i was collaborating with uh, for a period for the jewelry uh design with um uh with someone else and then uh, then we stopped to collaborate and uh, and then i asked ellie if he would like to join me uh, uh if it was possible so we start to work on the jewelry uh, uh at vivier and then and then also on the bags mm. oh, okay so you really worked together uh later on as well on the... yeah but you know when you when you love people and what they do it's it's the best way to to continue a relationship you know yeah. and it's uh, and it's also a uh, uh, productively uh, 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 positive thing mm -hmm. and tell me how did you do because vivier was a big job and roger vivier you you became creative director in 2002 uh, and you had your own brand how did you manage how did you juggle between the two I know it's very common, it's not very common, but there are uh, creative directors who are like Jonathan Anderson at Lueve, who has his own brand, but how did you manage? And at some point you decided to pose uh, on your own brand. <laughs> <laughs> very easy in the beginning, you do both collection. And I mean, it's just, uh, uh, you have your own collection that is actually uh, quite working uh, well in a way. So it's, it's uh, um, you design season after season and and it's it's on the tracks mm -hmm. uh, when you start to work with a new project as roger vivier as a creative director a house that was um closed years years earlier there was no production anymore and uh, and the designer was uh, passed away a few years earlier um well you there's, there's a, a first year when you uh, study uh, mostly you read you uh, get informed of what it was uh, uh, and to try to understand what is to be done and you try also you experiment with manufacturer with uh, with, mm -hmm. mod with uh, modelist and, and thing like this and you you so the, the first year and the two first year were quite uh, busy, but still manageable uh, to have uh, my own collection. Then uh, there was the boutique project and, and all this kind of thing. And then you have to go into this uh, uh, collection that become a real business. Then you have to do more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So with the time, uh, it was also more and more uh, um, representation uh traveling uh in in the world and everything so you have less and less time to consider your own collection so that's when uh, uh and you may maybe talking of myself i was less uh exciting with my own collection because the vivier project was getting bigger and bigger and the attention was uh, bigger and bigger and higher and higher uh, when in my own collection i was just a shoe designer, okay. uh, good or bad, I was a shoe designer. Vivier was a brand with uh, with communication worldwide and, and all these kind of things. So, so the two things uh, were unbalanced, let's say. There was one going less and less important and the other one getting taking more and more time in my life and, and maybe in my spirit also, okay. in, my, in my money. So, uh, um, I had to realize that one has to be stopped for my own sake. Mm -hmm. And I love to work, but I don't love to, I don't like to be mad at work. Yeah. So you stopped it in 2011. 
right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you relaunched it in 2022. What led you to, sorry? Because I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, you, I get my answer. What led you, <laughs> because you're crazy. I am. <laughs> Yeah, because I guess it comes with lots of challenges. When you're an independent brand, as you are, mm -hmm. what kind of challenges you, you're facing to, uh, yeah, to, I, I guess it's on several levels. Well, you know, it's just uh, to, uh, when, when you leave a brand as Vivier, uh, because it was a time to do actually 17 years at the helm of a, of a brand like Vivier, uh, um, yeah, it's such a longevity in the industry. There's change and sometimes you just feel like uh, yourself, yourself, you have to change also, do something that is different. So I, I consider that maybe I was, uh, I was okay, took some time actually to take this decision again, but uh, uh, it was a common decision because we, at, at the end there was no, um, you know, road can kind of uh, the ways start to separate in a way. So it yeah. was difficult to, to, to go on the same, on the, on the same track. So, mm -hmm. but, oh, and, uh, and then some, like two years ago, I realized that I had this project that was to be done before COVID and that was stopped with COVID. And I was still in the idea to do. So I decided to, to, take my own bag with myself and I, and, and just do it. And uh, because I usually, I'm usually very spontaneous. I, I, of course, I'm, I reflect on, on things, but at a certain point I just stop the, the, the thinking and I just think it's time to go now, yes or no. So I did, yes. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and you dive dive and here is one of your designs it's not one of those that i showed on instagram it's another one but yeah. still can you tell us a bit uh, about this one what? it feels like a teddy bear but for a shoe yeah you know I'm, i've been educated in fashion with uh, one thing when you do shoes is the pump mm -hmm. is one thing there's a ballerina there's a pump it's actually the same thing it's one without heel and the other one with heel uh, a pump is a ballerina with a heel mm -hmm. uh, um, so to me the, the, these are uh, the probably the first thing you should do because this is the the most simple uh, 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 element mm -hmm. uh, this detail it's just a good cut and a good shoe. So, uh, and you can play with it uh, a thousand times. So this one is a version of, a, of, the, of the pump that is regularly uh, in, in patent leather or in beautiful calf. Mm -hmm. And one is in shirling, uh, a natural color of shirling. So it, it's a kind of a Betty Boop approach. <laughs> oh yes, for sure. Now that you're saying it, it's uh, yeah. obvious. <laughs> Heel is still the stiletto heel I designed, but when it's covered like this, it really looks like a, a, a teddy bear of your, um, mm -hmm. yeah, of a little girl or a little boy. I think there's a sense of humor in your collections as well. Like the uh, denim one, I can't remember the name, but I think it's Miami something. And there's, um, it's spot on. When you, you see the name, you're like, oh yes, that's this shoe. Yeah, Miami. Spices because uh, it's the, the, the vintage denim jacket are reused. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a reflection after a style uh, that was very famous in my early time. And it was a pump again, mm -hmm. but uh, with uh, uh, vintage denim sleeves of jackets that we would buy from the flea market or wherever we could find that we have to undo, uh, washed, uh, prepare for the factory and they would build uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, kitten heel uh, pump that was very successful. And, uh, uh, but after being, after a few seasons, like six or seven seasons, it was the most copied uh, of my shoes I ever made and I had to stop because th there was too many. Uh, oh, really? Because uh, after six, seven uh, seasons or so, it slowed down and it was too much copy. So I had to stop. But 
recently uh, I was thinking again, uh, this is something I still love. Uh, so uh, again, I work with, uh, with uh, vintage denim jacket that we uh, actually, it's much more simple because you buy them on internet. Mm -hmm. They're perfect, uh, perfectly clean and, and unlined. And so it's still a kind of a couture approach for, for the factory because we have to undo um, and do everything like pockets that would be uh, a pain for a shoe and rebuild it. And to uh, the Miami Spice one are with, uh, I changed the original button for a crystal, uh, uh, specially designed buttons. And that's why I call them Miami Spice. Miami, because it's flashy and Spice, because maybe Spice Girl and jeans and all. <laughs> I, had, I hadn't realized that they came from actual vintage jackets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really upcycled, as we say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're very... I'm yeah. not exactly into the idea of, uh, of uh, you know, upcycling come naturally to me if it's possible. Mm -hmm. I never forced the idea. I think it's, uh, it became really a marketing approach, a marketing element to say we are upcycling and uh, or we are bio or whatever sometimes i feel like the etiquette says something should i believe mm. yeah i noticed that you didn't use the word upcycled why for <laughs> you, you, like, you you like it you take it mm. um so I was saying Eli, Eli Top came to my show, but also Pierre Hardy came to Sunday Night Live and he said one of his famous quotes, which is um, sneakers are like Botox uh, that they make you look younger. Uh, do you agree with that? Yes. You it's, agree? It's true. I don't do sneakers, but, but you... I believe that uh, I, believe, I, I really think is right because when you whatever you wear, um, not everyone look good in sneakers, but most of the time it's true that uh, it, it gives to the, to the clothes you wear uh, um, a cooler uh, effect. Mm. So, of course, being cool is being younger. Mm. And how do you manage? Because your style is very sophisticated and it's true that today I feel um, women are wearing, we are still wearing heels, but less often, let's say. Yeah. So do you consider your pieces, uh, do you want to create other pieces that could be worn on an on a everyday basis? Or you, how do you see that evil? In your selection, I think it's quite right what you have done as a selection. I was, uh, I, I, when I look at the three pieces you select, I, I was mm -hmm. like, okay. This is, this is a great way to see uh, uh, Bruno Frizzoni nowadays. There's the cool uh, uh, booty uh, in denim. Uh, there's the flat ballerina draped that, that is very specific, but it's not, it's not a simple ballerina, but you can wear it every day, uh, the whole day if you want. And then there's the, the shoe to, to give you the most, the 100% and glamour uh, if you want to go out mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, to climb the stairs uh, for the opera or to go to a restaurant for, for maybe something that is tremendously exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so... It's true that the ballerina looks very comfortable. But you know, it's a small, it's a very uh, small collection. So we, we, I would have loved to do sneakers, but I decided it was not the right thing to do in the beginning because you need to uh, be very popular, very uh, have a very good marketing approach, mm -hmm. and and uh, and it's also something if you do sneakers, you people would would love your sneakers more than the rest. So it would be difficult to 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 show that you are uh, um, you want to. I prefer to see my um, clients. Uh, uh, wearing a beautiful ballerina, a beautiful pump, uh, something for the evening, and she can buy the sneakers in any beautiful brand she likes. It's true that now 
every single brand does sneakers. So I don't need to come with this because it's already plenty. I mm -hmm. may be more accurate to do something that is maybe not that existing. Of course, there's so many beautiful shoes in, uh, in, uh, in, in proposal, Pierre Hardy, uh, Saint Laurent, uh, Dior, uh, I mean, whoever, name it. Uh, uh, I mean, Loewe, uh, GW Anderson, they are fun shoes. And, and oh, beautiful. very fun. Uh, Alexander McQueen, I mean, everyone, uh, Bottega, there's many, many, many brands where you can find beautiful shoes. Uh, you just need to be a little different i'm a I have my own way mm -hmm. it's not uh, uh it, it, it is different so if someone like it and, and many people like it including ken blanchett you've had such a celebrity following over the years well yeah beautiful friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but what can I say? I mean, there's uh, 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 Kate is uh, is one of uh, of the nearest uh, uh, I have. I mean, uh, we know each other for a long time now. It was in New York for the opening of the Roger Vivier store, and it was immediately um, something strong, let's say. And, mm. uh, and it, okay. Then, I mean, there's, there's others, there's Isabelle Huppert, there's, uh, uh, I mean, there's, there's different actresses, maybe less famous and, and, uh, and also beautiful women, uh, beautiful friends that are not uh, personalities. Mm. And they're one who can't really. Yeah. We well, thank you so much, Bruno. That was a pleasure having you. Thank you for making time during your weekend. You know, in the countryside, I'm relaxing. So it's, it's been relaxing to be with you. Thank you. And, uh, so and I have to say, I salute your Wi-Fi because usually when I have guests who are in the countryside, like Lucien Pages was in the seven and the Wi-Fi was terrible. So I, I really um, no. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> No, the, the, we, we tried. Uh, uh, the Wi-Fi uh, worked very nicely. Very and then... Clear. Um, but then it disappeared and it would not, I mean, anyway, you know, it works. It after works two perfectly. Minutes. Oh, uh, so we know that for next time and, um, and you can tell Hervé that he, he is welcome to Sunday Night Live anytime. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, thank you for thinking of me. I enjoyed the conversation first, actually, on, on IG. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I'm very flattered that it was your first Instagram Live. It was a First one. Exactly. And you are. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks everyone for Good. joining. See you next Goodbye. week. You <laughs> Bye. And to Ciao. Us, uh, we enjoy very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Ciao. Bye.